uh, good morning and welcome to the third conference on economic and business innovation 2023. Uh, nama saya adalah Niken Paramita. My name is Niken Paramita and I will guide this session. And now we are already uh, joined with Professor Janek Ratnatunga from Australia. Hello Professor Janek, how are you? Hello everyone. Nice to be okay. here. Uh, the first uh, can I read a little bit of your curriculum vitae, Professor Janik? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Professor Janik Ratatunga is now a Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Certified Management Accountant, or CMA, in Australia. And he is also an adjunct professor of accounting in Swinburne University, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, before that, he was a dean and the head of School of Commerce in the University of South Australia, head of the Department of Accounting and Finance, chair of business accounting at Monash University. And also, he has already held uh, many academic uh, positions in various uh, global universities like, for example, the University of Melbourne, University of Canberra in Australia, and also some universities in the USA, such as University of Washington, University of Richmond, and University of Rhode Island. Now, uh, thank you again, Professor Janek, for making time to be with us. Yeah, I hope everything goes well there with your business. Okay. Th yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, right. So mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, let me now share my screen. Please. Okay. So uh, thank you for that introduction, uh, uh, Ibu Nikan. Thank you very much, and uh, Doctor Buena, uh, my mentor. <laughs> in Indonesia, <laughs> thank you, my, my colleague. <laughs> my partner. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to the conference, Economic Business Innovation. Uh, from the economic faculty of the University of Vijayagama. So welcome all participants and uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me for a few minutes that I give this talk <clears throat> on a very important topic called future-proofing Indonesian companies. I know that the conference is about <clears throat> the recession and I shall uh, address the recession issues as well, but, for the, but this is the overall theme of my talk. Okay, so essentially, let's look at the change in the recent business environment. If you look at the top 10 companies in 2009, <clears throat> you will see that there were three oil and gas companies. And the first two were oil and gas. ExxonMobil was the number one company from the United States. Move forward to 2017, we had Apple as the number one company, a technology company. First, the first three companies were technology companies, and ExxonMobil had moved down to number seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Move forward to the next year, just one year later, ExxonMobil had moved out of the top 10 into 12th position, and there was no oil and gas companies in the top 10, okay? Last year, the, the time that we have this last report, a PWG report, okay, ExxonMobil is now number 20. Now there is an oil and gas company that has come up, okay, it's more energy company it is rated as, and that's Saudi Arabian oil, which is an amalgamation of a number of companies that put together, they've come to third position. Okay. So you can see, things are changing rapidly. Okay, and old businesses may not be relevant today. Take for example, this particular uh, thing that many of you might have seen, it's done a few years ago, but it's still relevant. Uh, Bitcoin, although it has halved in value, is still the world's biggest bank. If you take the amount of billions in it with no actual cash. Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. 
Alibaba, the world's most valuable retailer, okay, has no inventory. Okay? And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Okay, so these, of course, are changing as well. Okay, but you can see that we are now moving into a completely different era and we have to, Indonesian companies have to move along with it. So the basic theme that I'm going to talk about is that change is never painful. Only resistance to change is painful. If you resist change, that's going to be painful. Change itself is not painful. Okay, so let's look at, first of all, what are considered artificial enhancements, okay? So this is not a new thing. To help to enhance what we can perform in a better way, for example, in terms of strength, a tractor replaced horse-drawn plow that itself had replaced human labor, okay? So first humans are plowing the fields, then it's a horse, and then a tractor. Speed, automobiles replace the horse, that replace walking. Sight, telescopes and microscopes enhance human visual capabilities. And hearing, non-electronic amplification such as a record player and electric speakers will also help her to hear better, loudspeakers and so on. So we've had artificial enhancements for many, many years. And these are generally regarded as good things, things that will help us. Okay, so what is now called enhanced intelligence, not artificial intelligence, not yet anyway. What is enhanced intelligence? Okay, how has our mind, I've earlier talked about strength, about eyesight, about walking. What about our mind? Okay, so today we have a lot of things that are helping us in that way. Okay, marrying artificial enhancements to social media. We had things like Google Home. Uh, Alexis and so on that is in our home. In fact, in my home, there is this machine here that is listening to me all the time. And then when I say, okay, Google, can you tell me what the time in Indonesia is? Or, okay, Google, what do you think about this particular record or uh, CD? It can tell me about it. This is an age where the most powerful technology company in the world are powered by our personal data that is collected by their own artificial enhancement gadgets. So when you go to Google, when you go to Facebook, every time we do something, we've all heard of big data, it is our information is being collected. We don't want it to be collected. Sometimes we don't want this information to be known, but it is being collected and it is being sold. Okay, so millions of people are voluntarily inviting these devices, like I have done in my home, to their powerful microphone and their powerful microphones into their homes. Despite there are concerns that someone might be listening. Okay. Is someone listening? Definitely there is. Uh, Amazon has already told that they have an entire warehouse, uh, massive area where people are listening to every conversation. Why are they doing this? They say, ah, to serve you better, to tell you exactly what you want. But actually, they're listening to everything. So it is, I mean, all it's no secret that when you talk to your husband, your hubby or whatever about going to Bali, suddenly <laughs> on Google, a Bali will come up, right? As an as a option. Yes. They're listing all the time. Okay. So these are called artificial enhancements. So are Indonesian companies lagging in enhanced intelligence? Are we, are, do you all have the, or are you all the time going to the West, to the Googles and the Amazons and so on? to get your enhanced intelligence, okay? This is something that you all have to consider. Some homegrown things have to be considered in your own companies. So now what the big one, what is artificial in intelligence? Intelligence, okay, not enhanced intelligence, but artificial intelligence. So what is AI? Artificial intelligence is the intelligence exhibited by machines or software, okay? Essentially, what we are saying is, let's go back here, okay? Where machines are going to replace a lot of human activity, okay? 
So, so basic test of artificial intelligence is that you should not know that you're talking to a machine. You should not know that you're talking to a machine. That is the ultimate of artificial intelligence. Are we there yet? And we can ask the question, can it think? Okay. Can a artificial intelligence think? There's a thing called the Turing test introduced by Alan Turing in his 1950 paper on computing machinery and intelligence. He made this observation that we need not decide if a machine can think. We only need to decide if a machine can act as intelligently as a human being. Can it act like a human being? This approach to the philosophical problems associated with it, artificial intelligence forms the basis of the Turing test. So there are a lot of philosophical questions associated with this. Okay. But basically, can you tell the difference between that you're talking to a machine or talking to a human being? Okay, now all of you all have had chatbots coming up where it says, Can I help you? and so on when you go. We know that that's a machine. But today, there are things that have been developed that you actually do not know it's a machine that you're talking to. I mean, some years ago, this is not a new thing. Some years ago, this site is still there called Cleverbot. Okay. You can have a conversation with Cleverbot that you think you're talking with a human being. Okay. Cleverbot software learns from its past conversation and has gained high scores in the Turing test, fooling a high profile of people believing that they're talking to a human. Okay, but today, of course, the big one from November last year is Chat GPT. Okay, I think all of you all are very familiar with Chat GPT. Okay, Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI, launched in November 2022. Okay, now Chat GPT, if you all haven't yet heard of it, I mean, I'm sure you all have is going to change the world for a lot of people, especially universities. Because today you can give an assignment to a student and the student will go to chat GPT and, and put the question down and it'll give in less than a minute, okay? It'll give the entire answer. Chat GPT has in fact taken the medical test in England and got a B score for medicine. It can write software programs for you. It can write songs for you, okay? If you want to write a song in the style of Agnes Monica's later song, it can do it. Chinka, wow. like this, it can do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so it, it can do anything for you, right? And therefore, where are human beings? Okay. There are a lot of jobs that are question marks. I mean, legal opinions, university lecturers, all of these things. Uh, it's a brave new world that's going to come because it tells that it's AI, but you can't really know that human hasn't been involved. This is part of a family of large language models that will be fine-tuned using both supervised and reinforcement learning techniques. Now, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer Language, GPT. Okay. Now, I'm not yet sure, I haven't even looked into it, if there is a chat GPT version in Bahasa Indonesia, uh -huh. Okay, but I'm sure it's going to come very soon. And in fact, that's something that with such a large population that you all have, you all should do it yourself. Okay, get involved. Okay. Yes. So now let us come to this thing called a singularity. Okay. Singularity is when artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence. Okay. There's a nice little cartoon here. You've got to admire him. He started up as a cleaning robot and worked his way up to vice president, okay? Artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence. Already we know that they are beating us at chess and games like very complicated games like that, okay? The prediction is that a singularity will occur around 2030 to 2045. We are not that far away from artificial intelligence being more intelligent than humans, okay? We've seen movies about it with Arnold Schwarzenegger and terminators and, and all these machines taking out the world, it's coming. Okay? And Indonesians have to be ready for it. Okay? So we have to future-proof Indonesian companies from these winds of change. We have to. 
Now, of course, the current concern is the recession. This came about with COVID-19. And we are now so involved in trying to fix the recession problem of today that we are not looking at the wider things that are happening. And it's happening very fast. So what has the Indonesian government done in terms of the recession? A lot of excellent things. Okay, According to recent reports, Indonesia's economy is still facing a challenge to COVID-19 pandemic that could potentially and could potentially enter a recession. I mean, COVID-19 hasn't gone. It hasn't gone in Australia. It hasn't gone in Indonesia. We are still living with it. Okay. okay. The government has implemented various measures to support the economy to prevent a recession. Okay, so let's look at what these measures are. Okay. First of all, these are the measures that have been implemented or have been proposed to prevent the recession. First of all, it has been an excellent stimulus package, okay, almost 725 million, okay, in terms of dollars <clears throat> to boost conf the confidence and stimulate economic growth. So this package includes a number of things. I mean, these are all very familiar to you. Okay, tax executives of small and medium-sized enterprises, subsidies for electricity bills, funding for tourism and creative industries. So a lot of in eco economic stimulus. So very important for today's conference, it is economic stimulus. <coughs> There's also been interest rate cuts. Now, interestingly, you cut interest rate to stimulate the economy. So during a recession, to stimulate the economy, you cut the interest rate. And interest rate, I think, went down to about 3.5% in Indonesia. But what's happened is that when you do that and there's too much of money in the economy, inflation rears its head. Okay? So today, they are now putting the interest rate up again because of inflation. Okay, this is the problem that often there are these fiscal things that, you know, balance between recession and inflation. And often what we don't want is to come together. It is called stagflation. Stagnation along with inflation. <clears throat> that happened in the past in Indonesia and the rest of the world. <clears throat> so today's benchmark rate is 5.75 in Indonesia. That's the last time I looked. Okay. But the government has done more than that. Okay, it has done infrastructure projects because spending money on stimulating the economy, and you know, often this is coming from uh, the economics of uh, Keynesian economics. It is called to actually, um, actually, um, um, doing spending a lot of money on government infrastructure. So they've done lots of things in roads, railways, and ports. Okay, so the Trans Java Toll Road. The Jakarta MRT, all, all, all this, the Patimban Port, the Sukarno Hatta International Airport expansion, the New Bali Airport. Okay, and of course, what is not mentioned here is the huge move. I don't know how much it will cost to get to relocate your capital. Okay, so these are very, very important infrastructure projects that is again done to stimulate the economy away from a recession. There's also been uh, things that they have asked for debt relief. Okay, Indonesia has sought debt relief from international lenders to free up resources to fight COVID-19. The international lenders such as the World Bank and Asian Development Fund. Now, I am not a big fan of this, frankly, because these people give you money with conditions and the conditions are very, very tough sometimes. Not only that, they give you money, okay, especially when, when it's bilateral uh, loans, that you have to use that money to buy things from those countries. Okay? So China, as you know, has gone all over the world, setting up, giving money, but then you have to use Chinese labor and so on. Okay? America did the same thing. In fact, even worse. Okay? They will, they will give you money. They say, hey, you can't do self-sufficiency. You have to buy things from us with that money. Okay? So there is a problem with this, this thing. But anyway, that has been asked for as a short-term measure as well because they are having these issues with the money supply, especially foreign exchange. There's also been some fiscal report, uh, support. The government has increased spending on healthcare, social assistance, and infrastructure projects we already talked about to support the economy during the pandemic. Okay? So they are, they, it has reduced a little bit, especially in the 
healthcare social systems, but it was given especially in the, in the pandemic. Okay. So here are some of the things that they've also done in terms of rules on government spending in Indonesia. Okay, now I'm not too 100% sure if this is already implemented or proposed. Suspension of public procurement procedures, simplification of budgetary procedures, increasing the use of online facilities, relaxation of reporting requirements, and exempting some projects from approval committees and so on and so forth. They're trying to help us okay, to have more uh, ease in operating our businesses and so on, which is excellent. There's also a big drive for export promotion. Okay, big drive for export promotion. Indonesia has continued to promote exports to maintain foreign exchange earnings and support economic growth. Such export promotions are particularly in sectors such as palm oil, mining, and infrastructure. Now, the big problem with this is you're sending your natural resources out as raw materials that the Western countries and so on are converting into finished products and sending it back to you. They're taking your cocoa and sending you back coffee, Nescafe and so on. Okay, you've got excellent brands like Indo Cafe, but you are giving your raw materials to these companies to send back. Okay, similarly with your mines. Okay, I mean, you're sending things as raw materials out and then getting back highly value added finished goods and you pay much more for it. Okay. And this is one of the big problems that Indonesia has. Okay. Is that they're doing this in manufacturing as well. They are not actually manufacturing the big stuff. Okay. They are into more small scale manufacturing. So this is what I'm going to say to bring the argument back to where I started. Indonesian company need to become less reliant on traditional exports such as palm oil and mining and concentrate more on manufacturing of end-user products, including brands. You all should develop your own brands. Okay, Are you all doing enough of it? More support is also needed at the government level to stimulate Indonesia companies to invest more in developing in-house enhanced intelligence products and artificial intelligence AI products. Government is giving a lot of money in other areas, which is very good, but they really have to think about the future of Indonesian companies. Are you all going to be second, which you all are the second largest, largest um, in terms of population, but you're way behind in terms of the latest technologies. We have to not just put money into taking the raw materials away from Indonesia, but put it on these enhanced intelligence and artificial intelligence products. Okay, because by 2045, remember, machines will be more intelligent than us, and hopefully these machines will be built in Indonesia. Okay, so what is the role of a management accountant in all this? Management accountants can play a crucial role in helping companies to weather the storm during a recession. We have the tools and techniques to do this. Okay, they can provide financial insights and strategic advice in the following areas. We have learned about strategic planning, risk management, cash flow management, cost control, performance measurement. These are all things that are crucial for companies to weather the recession and ride the takeoff, okay? They can help companies reduce costs, improve efficiency, and make informed decisions that will position them for success in the long term when there is an upturn in the economy, okay? They should also advise companies in order, that in order to survive, they should embrace enhanced intelligence and artificial intelligence, okay? So final message, adapt or die, okay, adapt or die. You have to reinvent Indonesian manufacturing, okay? So let me stop by saying nothing is forever except change. The only thing for forever is change. <laughs> and thank you very much. Okay. Oh, amazing. Amazing. That's, that's a very good message, actually. Yes. Uh, it can be applied to any field that we are in right now, not just uh, accounting or management, but almost all fields. Nothing is forever except change. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Janek. That is very uh, insightful. And perhaps um, can I ask a little bit about uh, what you have presented? 
maybe just one or two questions, maybe. Sure, sure. Can do. All yes. right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you started the presentation with a very interesting topic, which is about, uh, the rise of, uh, in artificial enhancement. Yeah, enhanced intelligence and also artificial intelligence. And we in Indonesia already uh, experience the change bit by bit. Uh, Chat GPT is uh, right now becoming popular slowly, uh, especially in uh, education and also in some fields like uh, marketing. Chat GPT is uh, used by some people. So I think it's very interesting what you have presented. Uh, what I want to ask is, uh, you have already stated that there are still some concerns about privacy. And um, what, what do you think about this, about the issue of privacy and also uh, ethics maybe? Because sometimes... You know, technology is like a double-edged, uh, double-edged uh, knife or uh, sword. So, like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you think about that kind of issue? No, it's a, it's an ongoing issue. It's it's a really concerning issue because the legal legal has not caught up with the technology. Okay, so there are so many ways that the legal people are trying to give us more privacy. But the technology is so far ahead, okay, that we can't really catch up with it. Uh, the legal hasn't ca caught up. Okay, today, you will know that the moment you go on Google, okay, your information is sold. The moment you use your credit card, your information is sold. And they right, have a right. better, yeah, they have a better understanding of you than yourself, right? You may not know True. about you, okay, yeah. than, than yeah. what Google does, okay? So it's, yeah. it's a big issue. And, and let me, I don't know if I have time, but let me give you one example mm -hmm. is where um, the department store target in the USA, they were looking at people's website uh, uh, scanning, uh, where they were looking at how long a person was looking at their website and the products. And based on that, they were sending coupons, okay, for right. them to buy those products. Okay, they're a very famous case where target, send some coupons for uh, to a house, okay, and the father opened the mail and said, why are you sending my daughter, who is only 14, um, things about baby products, okay, mm -hmm. uh, nappies and, and so on. And what the father didn't know, what the girl's doctor didn't know, but uh, Target knew because of their big data analysis is that she was pregnant and she was looking at websites on baby products. So you can see the amount of privacy issues there, right? That was yeah. there by this. So technology hasn't caught up, uh, the, sorry, legal hasn't caught up with the technology. And I think there's no question today we have to accept that we are living in a world that someone else knows much more about you than yourself mm -hmm. even. <laughs> and it can be used quite dangerously, like what Donald Trump did when he looked at people's conversations and he right. found that they were using the word, you know, uh, stop the bow, uh, build the wall, keep the Muslims out and so on. And he used that in their, in his uh, election campaign. Very dangerous. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. There's, I don't have any solution, but it is certainly a big issue, both legal and ethical issues. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Uh, can I ask one more question related sure. to CMA? Uh, because you already said that a uh, management accountant has uh, has a huge role actually in uh, you know in uh, safeguarding the economy of a country. So, um, can you tell us the what's that the role of CMA, uh, especially maybe the uh, CMA Australia? Uh, in relation to CME Indonesia also, yeah? Uh, what is the role of CME that has already been done to, what's that, to uh, keep up, yeah, keep up with the current condition in the world? Okay, we now have, I, Professor Jenek, we yes. have more than 300 participants. So maybe right. you can marketing CME. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay. okay. So look, um, 
I can't compare CMA Australia versus CMA Indonesia or CMA USA and so on. All have their strengths, all have their weaknesses. So I can only talk about CMA Australia. And, and it's actually now CMA Australia New Zealand. Okay, because we have now expanded and got government recognition in New Zealand. Wow, and cool. Yes, the CMA program actually is is the one program that probably the only uh, professional body program in management accounting that has got government approval at the master's degree level. The New Zealand government has approved our CMA program to be equivalent to the master's degree. <clears throat> okay, so that's a big recognition. And um, we actually target people who are already accountants or with a degree in accounting. So you have to have a, a chart accountant or a CMA or ACCA or whatever, and then you get enhanced. So we are like enhanced intelligence, right? You get enhanced with a master degree level qualifications. It's very much an applied program, very applied, very practical, and uh, it covers a lot of uh, material in the uh, seven-day program that we run face-to-face -face in Jakarta. Um, yes. And um, the, the good thing about this program is you should see the reviews that it gets, okay? People are saying, you know, it's one of the best things that they've ever done. Uh, the assignments that we give, they actually, because the assignment is based on your own place of work, uh, the assignment often is given at their place of work and they get promoted based on their assignment. So we have lots and lots of positive feedback about the quality of the program, the application of the program for their own place of work, okay, and uh, and so on. So also, um, if you come to the CMA program that Buena and then Please join run, with CMA program on yes, you, August. You will get, you get me face to face rather yes. than in... <laughs> Not Zoom. So for participants, please join with CMA program on August. Yeah. I will okay. share the flyer. Program, Thank yes. you, yes. Professor Janek. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for this uh, opportunity to talk okay. to your 3,000 people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Enough. Okay. Thank yes. you very much for that. Okay. okay. Thank you, Professor Janek, for Thank spending you. time with us. Uh, hope everything goes well there and stay healthy, stay safe. Okay. See you on the next um, opportunity. <laughs> Thank when you. I see you. Bye. See you on August. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. I will stop. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.